allow this time to transmit transformation. Allow this flow to emit a realization of the transmutation as within, so without. To recognize with clear eyes, a clearer vision of what is happening, of the true causality of why things are happening. So this is another video from Mind Unveiled. He's going into uh <laughs> we're going in deep here in in the deities and the diet. And uh the sustenance uh and I I chose a spot here where they talk about a couple different things and one of the things is uh, Gnostic wisdom and one of the stories he shared was uh, finally I, I heard someone share the story that I've read uh, many years ago and uh, the story that I read was from a clearer transmission than the uh, the info that he that he uh, picked up upon so I will uh, clarify a little bit about um, what actually happened. On, on some level. <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're going to get into uh, Basically, the diet and hunger and this is a beautiful thing because right before this, I watched a video, uh, watched the rest of that video uh, of the of the video <laughs> that I that I did right before this. So we'll get into deeper level healings and how to use how to utilize your own waters in case you didn't watch that video that I covered last time in full. Uh, the certified health nut <laughs> would not be the certified health nut without plant spirit medicines, shamanism, and utilizing his own cistern. So yeah, I also wanted to say that I appreciate, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the little side box here. Because it's, it's, it's just cool to see these people in action, or, or just to actually see their, their persona. And, uh, yeah, just just to see their beauty, and it, it's a different it's a different layer of transmission, uh, isn't it? Whenever you can actually see the person, and yes, it isn't always needed to to see the person in order to feel the message being conveyed. And in most of my videos, I do not show my face, but I, I choose to show the muse. That is allowing the flow to happen and allowing the, the sharing and the transmission to happen. So I'm, I'm going to play a little bit of my singing bowl here before we go any further. Not too much because I don't want to... <laughs> lose focus of the flow.
I definitely needed that, so I'm glad I was able to <laughs> to share that. That was a uh, that was from like the singing bowl that that came to me through through uh, synchronicity. And the vibrations and harmonies that uh, reverberate through the resonance is something that is always. very magical in that uh, I allow it to happen as it does so uh, it's spontaneous okay so here we go with this and I, I do have a card card that I drew. Uh, this time it is from the tarot. Okay, so there was a time, not too long ago, after we fell into the current material state, that there was a golden age. This golden age is what we call Atlantis, but it's also getting mixed up with what is known as Tartaria, the confusion being the dating. We think Atlantis is a long time ago, right? Like 10,000, 20,000 years ago. The Atlanteans are the Hyperboreans of Greek myth. Hellenicus claims that the Hyperboreans, Celts, were a very just people living on acorns and fruit, and no partaking of wheat. Herodotus tells us that the Egyptians subsisted on fruits and vegetables, which they ate raw. Plinius confirms this statement. From the Rig Veda, one who partakes of human flesh, flesh of a horse or another animal, and deprives others of milk by slaughtering cows, O king. If such a fiend does not desist by other means, then you should not hesitate to cut off his head. And once again, the synchronicities here, because, uh... Yeah, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> uh, that text is from where I come from, like, in this uh, origin of the spirit. So, uh... As you can imagine, it's very hard for me to exist within a, uh, a world at this time period where there are so there is so much corruption that that needs its head cut off. And by 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 saying that, I mean you know not just what was what was said there, but also what we're going to get into, which is the Gnostic uh, story here. And uh, the thing that was left out with that, was, which is uh, the cutting off of the head, which, which is what has been done. So right now, what we are witnessing and existing within is a time period of uh, a flailing around of the body that does not realize necessarily quite yet that it has been detached from, from the head. Like it has a reaction and it's like flailing around. Um, because of this disconnect that has happened, but it it is uh, dying, and so this is this is what's happening here with so many systems that have been set up, um, constructs that have been set up. Things that. Uh, do not honor life. They have been disconnected from their head. And this is the I, the capstone of the pyramid um, in your dollar bill, if you are American or, or just the American bill. It has been severed not just not just as it appears on the bill which is it of course is disconnected because uh the, the very top of the tippy top 
do not necessarily associate or, or have anything to do with the rest of the body. But this is a transmutation. That the, the head has disappeared, as in it has chosen a different path. So we are witnessing a uh, an escalation here. If you haven't already witnessed the the dis-ease rise in people, the disconnect, the dissociation of reality rise as the level of, of awareness rises, so too does, does the level of disconnect rise. It's all going to rise until it meets a point to where it, it trans, transmutes and becomes one. So... My qu a quick message here is, is a reminder is don't get caught up in, in this uh, this flailing and falling away let it let it fall let it fucking flail let it fall and this is a uh, collective and individual because individually we're going to be going through I mean, the people that are are starting to wake up, have woken up on some level. You're going to be going through layers of this transitioning. And you have to let shit go that doesn't... doesn't serve you anymore. It doesn't have anything to do with... what realizing... <laughs> What, what the realization of, of what you really are, of what this shit is really about, of why you're here, of how you came about. And it, if it doesn't inspire you to, to feel these things, then it's just a distraction. And yes, you can learn from these distractions, but learn from them and release them. Because otherwise you're going to get caught up and stuck in the mud. And then you're just going to start flinging the mud around on other people. And creating more and more, if you want to call it karma, to come back to you from what you've been projecting. Until you finally transmute the projection and see it for what it is. The oldest inhabitants of Greece, the Plasgians, who came before the Dorian, Ionian, and Elian migrations, inhabited Arcadia and Thessaly, possessing the islands of Lesbos and Lake Manus, which were full of orange groves. The people with their diet of dates and orange, oranges lived on average of more than 200 years. This is accurate. The dates and the oranges are uh, very hmm. the words. Well, the apple is is the original, but the dates and the oranges are. are if you can find pure sources of these, they are very beneficial. You you can sustain your body from from either or but if you utilize both and if, then if you ha add in the triune of the apple then uh, that, that's gonna be more than enough but you also have to walk barefoot along the paths of uh, where these things grow where the wild things grow otherwise they're just going to be collecting random uh, 
data, random as in, uh, in they're going to be gathering gathering information from things around them. But if you are imprinting your essence, your bioacoustic resonance by walking around them and sending the DNA, the the sweat, the the feeling is coming out your feet, coming out your souls, connecting with the soil, then these plants, these trees, are going to pick up upon this transmission. And they are going to call upon, they're going to do what they are, were designed to do. And this is also what animals are designed to do. They're designed to serve you. And if you don't, if you haven't realized this yet, go out in nature with, with a clear mindset and just bear witness. Just look, like, look at uh, domesticated animals and how, for the most part, you know, with, 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 with owners that aren't completely disconnected these pets their whole existence is to serve their owner and if you uh, bear witness to like dogs and uh, do any look up any kind of dog training video and look at the excitement of, of the animal Their very existence is to serve man. And when I say man, I mean human. Both woman and man. Mankind. Humankind. And if you've ever been around a cat or have, have owned a cat. Uh, or have been around a feline. Any kind of feline animal for, for an extended period of time. You know and can feel the love transmitted through the eyes and also felt within the purring and the engagement of uh, seeking out the environment the, the pets always are aware of their surroundings and what is going on to aid the owner, the, uh, the companion of, of that pet. And so too, right, this, this comes back down to origin, why things are the way they are, why they were created the way they're created. We are not taught these things. We are taught the opposite. You want ultimate health and ultimate connectivity. You have to walk barefoot amongst the plants that you have planted. And they will do what they were designed to do. It is within their coding, the structure of how they were created to bring in knowledge and essence of the stars, the ethers, to transmute what is needed for that specific human. And then the fruit that is bared is the medicine for that specific human being. Don't take my word for anything. Do this for yourself and you will eventually come to realize that this is so. And if, if, you're, if you're empathic on any kind of level, you will instantly already know what is happening just by going barefoot and being amongst um, any kind of fruit bearing trees or plants. 
you you will just feel what is happening. And then once you taste amongst the ripened fruit, um, the thing that happens to your body, it's, you can't really put words to it. The, the life that comes into your body from doing this. This is ancient wisdom here, okay? This, the, <laughs> this is uh, what we have been taught to forget, okay? But uh, now is the time of teaching remembrance. Remembering all of the members, all of the pieces that were left and forgotten, only to, be, only to be recollected again, felt and engaged, engage this stuff for yourself, I don't speak this stuff just to spit out words and ideas, I speak this stuff because it is what we must engage, so engage it before you judge it, feel it. Another Greek poet, Hesiod, said, the Pelasgians and the people who came after them in Greece ate fruits of the virgin forest and blackberries from the field. Plutarch, the Greek biographer, observed, ancient Greeks before the time of Lycurgus ate nothing but fruits. They didn't eat like we do today, and they had a much longer lifespan. This is because they understood the body and mind. Atlantis was not a technologically advanced society like you see in sci-fi movies. It was advanced spiritually. Exactly. They were connected with the Godhead here in the material realm. Exactly. And that didn't make the parasitic archons who created this realm too happy. This civilization is the same civilization that created most of our cities. Like LA, New York, Paris, you name it. We see the same architecture from around the world, and most of it started from an anti diluvian base. The Essene way of life. The Essenes were a spiritual community of people who saved these ancient traditions from hyperbole. Many famous biblical characters like Jesus, Mary, Joseph, John the Baptist were Essenes. The Essenes were alchemists and had powers of clairvoyance, which allowed them. <sighs> alchemists. And they. We are all alchemists. What they were were self-realized human beings they they felt into the real more than what they were led to believe what they were told was real so they were connected with the the all that is the as within so without they experienced this directly And this goes back into the pagans and magans are true roots how the construct of the design was set up which is in harmony realization of this harmony will bring you back into a confirmation and divine contemplation of the template of the design of the purpose of the reason what is the reason why are we here? What are we doing here? These questions will be answered the farther you go inside. The, m the deeper you go within the rabbit hole. The more you can let go of the language that you have been indoctrinated into. And the more you go into the direct experience. Which transcends language. It is language. It is all language. The more you can do this, 
within meditation, within whatever form you need to do it with, uh, utilizing plant spirit medicines. But ultimately, it's a focus. You have to engage a focal point and feel into this and release into this and allow it to speak to you. You have to remember how to listen to this language. And the more you do this, The more you will see as within, so without, the more you will see the things outside of you reflect what you have felt inside. Learn to speak to angels and see nature spirits. Alright, so what I'm going to share is pretty mind blowing if all this is new to you, but basically there's a gospel called the Essene Gospel of Peace which was translated from an ancient Dead Sea scroll that was locked up in the Vatican. And in this gospel, the sick come to Jesus and ask him for assistance. Jesus basically told him... Okay. So, uh, yeah, here we go with this, like I said. Um, actually, what this, what this story is, is... There was a group of people that came with Jesus, and Jesus showed them... Uh, and I say Jesus, and uh, this is a any kind of figure that you want to put upon, or label a name upon, uh, the the Christened state of mind, the the transmuted, the, the the one, the the shaman, the alchemist, the one that has done the inner work, and that is beginning to show how people can free themselves. This is the story of such. So. There was one that had freed themselves of the parasites within, and so he took a group of people with him to a river. And for seven days they fasted on just water, so not only purified water, but also hard water, or dense water, or what you may call uh, water that has uh, many, many kind of structures to it, molecules, uh, just, just plain river water. So they drink this plain river water And they expelled and expelled, and this is what this is what doing this does. It expels things from you because uh, this this water is dense, and uh, you you can liken it to a, a high level of silica water or even alkaline water is going to cleanse you and clear out stuff. But you don't want to just exist upon this. You need to trans mute and transition yourself to a clearer water. A water that has a some kind of a filtration process happening. So it's kind of like dead water and living water. So you utilize the dead water to get the dead out. You, do, you utilize the living water to fill your cup back up. But you have to empty your cup out first. And then you can fill it up. Truly. So in this emptying out stage. There was someone. And in, in the story that I felt and read. And was guided towards. And actually come to think of it. It was a transmission. From, from another and uh it was a clear transmission because it was it was uh realized as a living image and if we're gonna get, get all into that fucking talk you know in, in later videos about feeling life and feeling the living image 
and feeling death and being entrapped within the occulted image. So one of these people, um, their corruption was so deep. The the parasite was uh, so so much controlling them and had absorbed so much of their life essence that uh, this person's toes and feet began to um, become coiled and uh, trans transformed because of the fasting and because the this thing this parasite wasn't being fed anymore it was trying to take the host down with it so this person fell into a uh, unconscious state and his limbs and uh, extremities began to coil because of this he tells them that they can't see nature and that they need to come back to the mother. He tells them that they need to start fasting and to start performing enemas. And one of the guys becomes too sick from fasting. So the others beg Jesus to cure him. So Jesus milks a goat. He blesses the milk with um, all the different angels for each element. So yes, uh, what happens is the milk is used, the milk is heated, because once uh, once heat is applied to it, the aroma, the, the ethers, the essence starts to uh, really come about and come out of the, of the thing, of the liquid of the mana, the mana starts to come out and the the parasite realizes that I can I can suck this host dry or I can go towards this thing that smells oh so sweet that that is uh, calling me towards it so that's what happens and then this guy like passes out and then out of his mouth comes a worm the size of his body. So Jesus pulls it out and crushes it with a rock. <clears throat> so yes, there there is a large parasite that comes out of, of the person's mouth and um I do not know if it's crushed with a rock, that kind of makes more sense, but the head is severed, so I don't know if it's smashed or cut with something, but the story that I read was that it was severed, um, and this is what has been done, this is what has to be done to the parasite, the, the head has to be uh, taken away, and then the body will fall. Otherwise, you can get rid of 99% of the body and you think that you're good. You think that you have fasted enough. But that little that little piece, that the only piece that matters, the head of the parasite, can still exist. And if you have not touched deep enough in your fasting, then whenever you refeed... the parasite will grow again. And I know that whoever hears this, like, you know this. Whoever hears this and has done deep fasting work, you know what I'm talking about. Even if you've done 40 days of fasting, you know what I'm talking about. He's like pointing to it. He's like, see, 
this is what's been sitting inside of your guy's body. Yes. Um, so the guy who was suffering finally was cured from his pain. And, um, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down in, um, in a second, but hang on there. This is super interesting stuff. <laughs> You're going to find it interesting. So these scenes are mentioned in history by Josephus, Philo, and Pliny, all having one thing in common. The scene's origins are lost in prehistory. Yes. I tend to think that what Josephus wrote on them is slight misinformation, as he says these scenes married, and Pliny says these scenes never marry. Josephus says that the Essenes are found in every city, but Pliny locates them on the western coast of the Dead Sea. Quote, on the west side of the Dead Sea, but out of range of the noxious exhalations of the coast, is the solitary tribe of the Essenes, which is remarkable beyond all other tribes of the whole world, as it has no women and has renounced all sexual desire, as has no money and it has only palm trees for company. Day by day, the throng of refugees is recruited to an equal number by numerous accessions of persons tired of life and driven there by the ways of fortune to adopt their manners. Thus, through thousands of ages, incredible to relate, a race in which no one is born lives on forever. So prolific for their advantage is other men's weariness of life. So... <sighs> yeah, we'll probably end it there. Uh... Yeah, the Immortals. So... That is choosing to live uh, an immortal embodiment. But ultimately, uh, you will come to realize the, uh, the folly in that. And realization of immortality, of just the physical, because you are denying yourself of other... Uh, transmutations and, and energetics that need to happen in order for in order for the actuality uh, the realization of true immortality to be realized you have to let go of the body of the physical for a time at least and that's not to say that you you cannot have a physical body eternally because this is this is our origins but because of our folly and because of our fallen ways that we have become indoctrinated into and uh have not been taught about but but consistently repeat over and over time and time and time again, cycles and cycles again. Uh, for, for the majority, they live these shortened, embodied lives. In hopes that within this shortened state, um, an excitement happens, a realization happens. And then that it is is what is transmitted in the seed for the next generation. So yeah. We'll end it with that. And the card. The Empress. 
and oh my gosh, I just, I just showed, I just showed a, a, a cartoon of a naked woman, so, uh, I don't know how YouTube is going to feel about that, but, uh, considering the hypocrisy and that they, they show, uh, other, they have other videos up that, that show incredible violence and death and, uh, nudity that they are choosing to, uh, pick and choose and cherry pick what they consider acceptable or not acceptable while keeping these other things, uh, these other kinds of videos up it, it should just be very clear what's going on and uh, what's happening so if you feel the need to choose another platform then uh, look into that The Empress, a voluptuous queen, reclines in the shade of a flowering tree, wearing her starry crown, she holds an Egyptian crook, the emblem of her role as shepherdess of the people. Around her are symbols of fecundity and authority. A flowering lotus, ripening fruit, scales, and a flail. The Empress is the Earth Mother who creates and sustains life. Hmm. She is the home, she is the uh, sustaining property, but there are many other energies and essences involved with the creation and the sustaining as well. But the Earth Mother provides, she is the provider, prolific and generous, she is the great provider. <laughs> She pours forth riches from her body, the fruits and grains and greens of the earth, symbols of her deep love, of why she was created. She governs all things relating to motherhood, conception, gestation, birthing, and sustaining a child or other creative endeavor. She possesses an incredible magnetism that draws everyone to her, especially animals and children, who instinctively trust her maternal spirit. And like I've mentioned before, the animals and the children, they're going to show you how they react in their eyes they're going to reflect back to you what you are. The Empress reminds us of the magic and wonder of our own bodies. Make the lighting set up. And the miracle that we are, like her, have the capacity to give forth and nurture life. Her power lies in her reverence for the physical world. 
she loves nature and delights in indulging her senses. Her sensuality encompasses both the gentle intimacy of mothering and the fiery passion of a lover. Either way, the Empress lives her life through love. She needs to share herself, to be herself. Her generosity is so boundless that it can be overwhelming. In her, in, in her unceasing proliferation can at times generate chaos. This is the thing like too much love, giving too much of something, too much no longer becomes uh, beneficial. Like We have to find the balance. We have to seek the balance of all things, heaven and earth, the lower and higher realms. We have to seek the homeostasis and transmute all aspects, all hues, all colors of being a human. This is what it means to be a true human. To know both polarities, both sides of the coin, and to seek to know the central point, the monad. In a reading, the Empress calls on you to love and care for yourself, body and soul. Follow your emotions and listen to your in instincts. She also asks you to embody her qualities of nurturance and give something of your own glory to the world. And I'm just going to go ahead and add, the more inner work you do, the more refinement that happens, the more this process happens where naturally you're going to give more because you have filled your cup up. First is the process of emptying your cup, and that's the hell. That's the diving down into the depths, into the darkness, into the hell. Finally emptying your cup out and filling it up with truth and gnosis and, and awareness of, of self-love. Also, um, a realization of what you are. That there is no disconnect between you and everything else. Between you and everyone else. So this love that overflows, that's the sharing. That's the, the overpouring is, is what happens once you've reached a point of cultivation where you're ready to share your wisdom and your gnosis and this happens on many levels on, on different levels for different people a lot, a lot of people feel the need are indoctrinated into believing that they need to share before they are ready to truly share their inner standings because they have not yet truly engaged with this inner process so this is what it's about this is this is the reminder that I offer and encourage you to engage this process of gnosis and understanding and recollect recollect and remember all the pieces that have been forgotten all the pieces coming back together into the unity, into the triune, into a perfected, harmonious state, transmuting this corruption into something that is going to be beneficial. It is happening, people. Open your eye up and feel. as one, as within, so without, one as one, feel it, and then see it.
and then the image is clear and pure. Don't get your signals mixed up. <laughs> Feel the real. And then you can start to create this feeling that you have cultivated. And you can see it being manifested through synchronicities, through the happenings, through the interconnectedness, through the connections with, with people far away, but, but never really all that far away because they have you have created that spark, that connection. And once that has happened, it's instantaneous. These synchronicities are instantaneous now. And this snowball is, is, is a rolling. And we are collecting more and more awarenesses. The more we roll, we're, we're keeping this fucking shit rolling and flowing, people, and surfing these waves. And more and more people are catching the vibe. So keep on, and keep on, on, and keep on, keep on doing you. Keep on going within and feeling deeply and doing things that challenge you, doing things that guide you into a clearer vision, into, into a place where you begin to feel your real again. This is where we are meeting. We are meeting in the middle, but it is also where we came from. So I'll meet you there. <laughs> deep love and appreciation and honor and respect for the ones that feel and the ones that are catching the vibe, catching the wave and flowing as we go in. Love you.